I have to ask you about Interstellar. So I think it's an incredible film. I've seen it inspire so many scientists and engineers. It's just uh, philosopher, everybody, humans. Uh, it explores space travel, physics of space time, human nature, human condition, human connection. Um, how has that film expanded your understanding of uh, the the universe yeah. and our place in it? Yeah. Well, it's the uh, it's got the old Mister Mayor on the corner. How big is that cloud? Metaphor in it because that was the character I played, Cooper's. That was the existential question for him. Head down, practical. Stay here. Be a father to my children. But his dream before his children were to go explore space. So when he's taking that truck out and the countdown's going down, that's the the hinge of the existential question that we all face in some form. Um, the, the 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 sense of time, which I think everyone loves, that sense of where time can run at different speeds and I there's a incredible scene where Cooper as a father's getting video feed from his children who've aged and he's realizing he's missed all that. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. That it, it, it you know the, I mean overall that 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 concept makes me Consider and imagine. I'm going to talk about mystical successes instead of engineered ones, like the engineered ones. That, 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 there's, there's ethos from that film and, the, and, and what Nolan put into that film and theories that make me go, yeah, what does any of this matter? What do we, maybe we are, maybe we're AI. It makes me go, maybe, maybe this is all, it's already all been, <laughs> it's already all been written. What's happening right now in this, Blip of time, you're here. 53 years so far. We'll see how many we get. Um, what other parallel timelines are happening out there? Do Is it is it small-minded of us to define life on other planets as only something that can live within a climate that has water in this amount of O2? I, th those terms may be um, too, too small. Thing. What do you mean? Who, are we saying only life has to have water in this amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide. I don't, maybe that's, maybe there's a whole redefinition of the ingredients that other life forms need. Um, it's sure in a similar way to contact, which is a movie I did with Bob Zemeckis, um, inspires me that the universe is more active and lively and God's backyard's bigger than I thought. And wow, that's exciting. And, you know, people go now, yeah, you believe in, extraterrestrial life i said yes man I, I think it'd be arrogant not to i sure hope so you think there's alien civilizations all out there intelligent ones just uh, far in uh, far on distant stars i i hope so and i think we it's possible may have many among us right here why and, and i go for the, the the why not in that just to keep that that train of thought open to the to learn and 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 consider, you know, those existential questions. I think it'd be arrogant not to. There's so many hundreds of billions of planets just in our galaxy. Just in I, ours. I can't imagine there's not life out there. And um but I suspect it's very different, like you said, than we are. And we have to have a humility to open our eyes to how different life could yeah. be. And if and when we cross it, unlike we've had a tendency to do when we try to go with some nation takeovers, um, I think it would be our inherent glitch to go in believing that any other life form civilization wants to take over territories to go into it with thinking that, okay, this is an opposition. I, I, I mean, I, I think that's a, a human trait of ours and to consider that another life form would have an interest that 
more land or more territory <laughs> is good for them, I think is I think is a shallow idea. I don't think they're I think of it more like, you know, when I think of heaven, those considerations are not in in, in anyone's mind, heart, or uh, intent in the heaven that I think of. You know, so in other civilization, these things I, I don't I, I mean I I I hope that if we would just see and would learn that it would be the natural side of welcoming. It wouldn't be a primate response to, no, I have fire and you're coming over trying to put it out, or I have food and you're trying to steal my food. I don't I don't, I don't think it would be I think it's a shallow thought to think that, oh, it's gonna be about ownership and we would be trespassing. I think it would be, I don't think they're would have a sense of borders as we do. I just hope we humans are smart enough to uh, detect and to see aliens <sighs> because because of how different they are. You know, we don't, we often have a very narrow definition of what is intelligence. You know, it's very possible that trees are extremely intelligent if we kind of right. zoom out at a different time scale, a different, like, just look at stuff in a, from a bigger perspective that that's outside of being so human centric. It's a great quote that someone told me, this astrophysicist told me this, how accurate it is or not, someone else can argue the validity of what I'm about to say or not, but I thought it really was a perspective grabber for me. Like, look, see, the universe was created at midnight. Humans came around at 11.59 and 36 seconds. Mm-hmm. I love the little analogies or that put that frame, like mm-hmm. that make it, oh, yeah, the pale blue dot. There it is. That perspective. Mm-hmm. Something so relaxing and empowering about that at, at, the, at the same time. And humbling, but confidence boosting, <laughs> you know, allows forgiveness, allows ambition. Um, I just love the perspective of that, that, that picture, to picture it that way in our timeline. <laughs>